Hello, and welcome to this in-depth tutorial presentation entitled Demystifying the Control Room in Cubase. I'm your host, Scott Sizemore from sldmusic.com, and I will be guiding you through this very powerful and unnecessarily confusing feature of Steinberg's popular DAW software package. In a nutshell, the control room in Cubase offers a powerful way to separate your monitoring environment from your mixing environment. That may sound boring and unnecessary at first blush, but it's really very powerful and useful. And as we go through its setup and features, I'm confident you will find ways to incorporate the control room into your everyday use of Cubase, even in the most modest studios and recording setups. I will take you through the process step by step starting with a project without the control room active, and I will explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how and why Cubase reacts to each change we make. By the end of this tutorial series, you will understand how every function of a full-fledged control room implementation works, and you will be able to confidently deploy those features for your own use. So let's not waste any more time. In the next video, we'll set a specific Cubase preference to make sure we're all on the same page, and then we'll jump right in setting up a control room from scratch, and adding features to it one by one until you see just what a powerful tool it is firsthand. Let's get started. 